Hi guys, James at Goddard Radio Moscow Beer and Metal Reviews again for you today with another beer review. Um, for this one we will go back down to the city of Melbourne in Victoria in Australia and uh, I'm going to review another one of the beers that Pete Willis from Hawthorne Brewing Company sent me. So this is the second of the three reviews that you'll see from me from these guys and this one is the Amber Ale, meant to be a very very nice beer so I'm quite interested to try this one for you today. As is usual then with my beer reviews, I'll take you through a very kind of brief history of the brewery, just a very short one. If you want to go straight to the tasting, just fast forward and the brewery website is in the video description for you below along with a link to my other Hawthorne beer reviews. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about this brewery, it's brewed in the hot the brewery is based in the Hawthorne suburb of eastern Melbourne. And the brewery was founded by three friends, Darren Milo, Pete Willis, and Hamish Reed. And they all actually had a history of home brewing and they'd all been involved in the corporate and legal world. So before they actually founded the brewery, they had all the connections in place to actually do it. And the brewery was founded in 2008 and they released their first beer, which was the Paleo in mid-2009. Now their labelling and branding apparently was designed by the Leo Burnett company and it's meant to be a piss take of the jargon that you find on a lot of the kind of modern macro beers if you like and it says things such as imported from Hawthorne and premium flavour and all of this kind of thing so the idea is that that's meant to be a dig at the sort of macro beer market but the company have actually been trying to find themselves a permanent home over the last few years and they've increased their offering to six beers and they now have national distribution throughout Australia so you can find these guys kind of quite easily regardless of what state you go to in the country and they do have some exports as well I've, I've never seen them back home in Europe yet but maybe that will be something that comes out in the future but keep an eye out for them these guys have actually got some nice kind of quite hop forward beers if you like but the bulk of their beer is actually brewed at Mildura Bay Brewery up in the northwest of, uh, of Victoria and they also brew some at Southern Bay, which is one of it's down in the sort of southern suburbs of Melbourne on the sort of eastern side of the inlet, if you like. But um, when they introduce new beers as well, they actually have quite an interesting method for it. They tend to bring them in as a seasonal keg to test the market, and then if successful, they release them as part of the core range the following year. So, um, so yeah, that's your kind of brief uh, history, if you like, of the Hawthorne Brewing Company. Just to list the beers that you'll get from these guys, you get the Australian IPA, which I've already reviewed for you, the Golden Ale, which will be my next review, Pilsner, which I've already reviewed as well, Premium Ale, this guy here, the Amber Ale, and they also have a Wit beer as well, sort of Belgian style wit. So anyway, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer. I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little quick look at the artwork on this one. This one's a little bit different to the other ones because it's not simply a different colour, it's got different kind of shading and things on the label there, but you can see the ship that's the kind of trademark of the Hawthorne Brewing Company there on the label. It's actually quite a nicely presented beer. I actually do like quite like the darker colours on this one, so maybe you'll see that from some of the other ones that you'll get in the quite near future but it says on the front it says an auburn coloured English style ale highlighted by classic British hops so usually you'll expect a little bit of earthy character from those kind of English hops and rich malt characteristics but it's 4.7% alcohol by volume and um, yeah, it says brewed naturally, preservative free and it says in the tradition of the travelling merchants of old, the flavour merchants crisscross the globe to bring home the secrets of the world's best brewers. It is only by trialling and refining these techniques that we were able to create beers of such distinction. Like this English style amber ale combining a blend of roasted malts and traditional old world hops, another world class beer imported from Hawthorne. Follow the trail of flavour merchants at hawthornebrewing.com.eu and it's got the address and stuff like that on the back, Glen Ferry Road at Hawthorne, Victoria. So, without further ado, let's get on with this one. Actually, it's 4.7% on the Richter scale, as I mentioned to you, but one thing I really would like Hawthorne to do on their website is to actually put the hops and things that you get in this beer, because they are quite hop-forward beer, so it's always interesting to actually know that. But as you can see, we've got a nice kind of smoky opening there. I'll just get this guy out. Nice good head on these. I always found this with these beers so far that they do actually pour quite well. So as you can see you've got a nice kind of two fingered um, frothy sort of slightly beigeish head on it there. If I put my fingers behind the glass you can see it is quite transparent but there is a yeah it's kind of a reddish sort of reddishy almost slightly chestnutty amber brown there. A little bit of a goldeny colour to it but I'd say it's a kind of reddish chestnutty brown which is the kind of colour that you expect a little bit from the amber ale. This one, I'll just move it to the light, it is actually quite reddish so I would stick with that but there's quite a bit of carbonation going up through it, a lot of small bubbles actually but there are 
some kind of bigger bubble of smoke uh, going up to the top of the glass and the head is kind of completely frothy. But on the nose, one thing you'll actually notice with this as you take it out, it is actually very fruity. It's almost got like a kind of um, stone fruit, the kind of sort of fruit you expect from a, a, um, a kind of scotch ale or something. That's the first note that I'm getting off of it. It definitely has that kind of red berries and stuff kind of coming out of it actually. But there is a more kind of citrusy fruit element in there as well. So it's quite interesting in that regard. There's a nice kind of... Um, berryish and citrusy aroma but there's also grassiness coming out of the hops there and as I said these guys do quite like their hop forward beers but I mean underneath that you're definitely getting a good bit of caramel and kind of white bread notes as well and there is I think there is an element of nuttiness in there too and maybe a little bit of cereal but it's a big it's a big kind of fruity and bready uh, thing and there's a lot of caramel in there as you'd expect from an amber ale too so a nice kind of caramel bready slightly nutty malt base, a little bit of cereal but there's a nice grassy and fruity character in there and I think it, the first impression I got was a kind of scotchy or sort of stony fruit kind of character you're getting off this but as you take it in a bit more and more it becomes gradually more grassy and more citrusy so maybe that was a bit of a premature assumption on my part but anyway let's get this guy tasted anyways should be a really nice beer as I say nice hop forward beers from these guys so the Hawthorne Amber Ale cheers Yeah, the first impression of this one is there's a nice really lingering malt flavour in this one. It just kind of blankets the tongue. You can pick up the kind of earthy character that's typical of the English style hops in that. that can, and it kind of builds around the edges of the tongue actually as you move into the aftertaste. You've got that typical sort of earthy, um, earthy slightly grassy character coming out from the hops. The earthy character is actually really quite prominent and it almost comes out like a kind of um, sort of cereal spicy character. It mixes in very well with sort of white bready malts. The caramel in this one's quite mild I would say though. Yeah, there is a nice kind of um, lingering slightly caramel sweetness but it is mainly a sort of um, cereally and bready flavour that dominates this one actually. The hops are very very earthy which isn't really the impression you would get from the aroma. You would be thinking you'd get a more kind of um, fruity and quite grassy flavour but it definitely is more of a, a nice earthy character you're getting from the hop and that's typical of English hops really. So it's probably more fair to categorise this one as a an English amber ale than an American amber ale to be honest. But yeah, it's quite a nice beer. A lot of people, you would, as I say, you would want to categorise this in style as more of an English amber ale than an American amber ale. The American ones usually are a lot sweeter and that's typical with most American beers. They tend to be very hoppy and very fruity whereas the English ones tend to lean towards being a bit more malty. But this is quite interesting because within the English style, this guy has quite a bit more of a kind of earthy hop character coming out. So as an English amber ale, it is actually really quite an interesting one. But as I said, you're getting a nice kind of um, white bready and almost yeasty character actually just blankets the middle of the tongue there and as you move out towards the edges, that's when you're starting to get that more kind of cereal and slightly earthy character from the hops. I'm not picking up very much in the way of fruit flavours in this one, I have to admit. There is just a little bit of grassiness, but it's more, rather than being a flavour, it's almost like the feel you're getting, that sort of kind of fresh feel to it around the edges of the tongue there, so it's, it's a very kind of interesting take on this style I would say. I have to admit I would be interested to see how it turns out on tap actually. But it's interesting to get that earthy hop character, as I said this brewery are quite hop forward in their beers and that earthy hop character just kind of, it makes this a really quite interesting take so it's a kind of hop forward English beer, whereas I've found generally a lot of these English real ales tend to be more malty, so this is a very kind of interesting example of it, I would say. But yeah, I mean overall, it's actually it's a very interesting beer, so definitely give it a go. In terms of the mouthfeel, I'd say 
it's kind of quite light, maybe pushing the mid-body that's got a nice oily mouthfeel to it. The carbonation is actually quite light as well, it's quite a smooth drinking beer. And um, the other thing I would say about it is that it's 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 actually a very sessionable beer too. I would say it's it's um, something you could actually sit down and drink quite a few of. So if you quite want a sessionable English style amber ale, then definitely give it a go. But there's a nice kind of bittery character that actually comes out from the the earthy flavours. The earthy flavours really linger in this one. So if you like your nice earthy hot beers, this is definitely one that you want to give a go. But anyway, um, that's my review of the Hawthorne Brewing Company. As always, um, please let me know in the um, in the comment section below your own thoughts on this beer. Always interested to read people's thoughts on my uh, reviews and my take on the beer as well. So go and check out Hawthorne Brewing Company. The brewery website's in the video description below. And as always, please like, subscribe, share, and I will see you again with my next beer review. Cheers.